Hello and welcome. Today we'll run through the VNS3 Administration Guide. We'll start with some basic setup and configuration. On the left-hand column, you'll notice under Admin, you can change the topology name. You can change it to something like Demo. Click Save. It will immediately change in your menu area. Under the admin, you can also change the admin username. When you log in, the default is VNS cubed. Click change username, you'll be prompted to log in. And again, under admin, the next item is passwords. You should change your passwords immediately as soon as you have access to the VNS3 UI. But if you need to update your passwords again in the future, Make sure to create two different types of passwords, both the web UI password and the API password. And next is a new feature in VNS3 4.0. Under admin is the HTTPS certificate area. You can install your own SSL certificates, either as a certificate or an SSL key. Simply choose the file and click upload and install. And finally for administration, you can reboot your controller from the menu item. It'll create a pop-up and you'll say, OK, I want to reboot. And your controller will reboot. You can also refresh. And the final administrative item is resetting factory defaults. This is not in any menu item. You have to enter this into the URL. If you go to the URL colon 8000 slash reset underscore defaults, you'll have to enter the string of characters below to confirm your reset. Click Reset Defaults. Next, we'll look at the VNS3 Firewall. Under Connections, click Firewall. VNS3 Firewall is another layer of security and control for your cloud-based deployments. VNS3 Firewall features are controlled using IP table syntax. Make sure to check our administration guide for information about syntax. Also note that the order of rules matters. Rules are applied from top to bottom until first match. If no match is found, the packet is allowed to continue on. If your customer rule doesn't reject a packet, it will be allowed by default. But this default is a bit restrictive. Traffic is allowed from known VLANs. Known VLANs are VLANs listed in IP tunnel rules and VNS3 virtual LAN. So allowing traffic from other sources requires adding firewall rules to explicitly accept that traffic. Also note that firewall rules added to specific controllers are not automatically synced to other controllers if you have peered controllers. All right, so a couple examples of VNS3 firewall. If you want to drop all packets from one IP address to another, Click Save and Activate to put your firewall rules into place. So now this rule tells VNS3 to drop all traffic from 192.168.3.0 slash 24 subnet except for the 192.168.3.11 IP address. A couple other examples. Specifically for NAT-T, VNS3 lets you use your cloud VLAN just like you treat your home or office network and isolate it from inbound requests or services, but allows most outbound service requests. In this example, your VNS3 controller is a VLAN subnet, is in a VLAN subnet with a network from 172.31.1.0 through 255. Many clouds with VLAN capabilities map a public IP address to the private IP on ETH0. 
Here we're telling our VNS3 controller to masquerade the traffic coming from that subnet out to the internet and then return the response packets to the requesting machine. For an example for port forwarding, a common use case would be using Windows Remote Desktop on one of your cloud servers as a jump box and then you want to remote all other cloud servers in your VPC. VNS3 lets you do this with your VPC just like you could from a home or office network. You can allow specific traffic from a specific source on a specific port to be forwarded to another machine. So using the same example network, we can assume a source network public IP of 69.69.70.70 from which the RDP client is running. So this tells you that NAT needs to be enabled. You should specify the port to be forwarded. In this case, we said RDP 399. And specify the machine for port 3389 traffic. Here it's 10.199.1.130 using the 2 syntax and use the JDNAT syntax to specify destination network address translation. Next we'll look at net mapping. Net mapping allows you to create IPsec tunnels to imaginary IPs on the VNS3 side, side of a connection. You can use the VNS3 firewall to map all traffic to and from the imaginary IP to the actual host on your cloud side. This is very useful in situations where a connecting party has an address overlap with your overlay or VLAN subnet. So here in this instance, our remote subnet is 10.10.10.0/24. Our VNS3 overlay, where our client packs are, is 172.31.10.0/10.50. Our customer with a connection to their LAN is in the 10.10. .10. So we've allocated an elastic IP address to the account, but not associated it to anything and then we'll use an IPsec tunnel from this address, the Elastic IP address, to 10.10.10.0/24, and now we are successfully net mapped. Next, we'll look at VNS3 routes. From the status page, on the left-hand side under connections, click routes. You can allow your controller to point to subnets not explicitly included in the IPsec or overlay configuration. These routes can be automatically shared between other controllers included in the topology, via peering, and with overlay network connected devices. You have two types of routing, route advertisement and interface routing. Route advertisement is a simple route that tells all overlay network participants a certain site or destination is available. Interface route is more complex route. It also tells the overlay participants that a certain site or destination is available but it also allows configuration of the interface on VNS3 controller where this is available as an optional gateway IP. Here's your route. Next, we'll talk about runtime snapshots. Under Maintenance, click Snapshots. Here will be the available snapshots that have been created. Click Take New Snapshot to take a new one. You'll see it created here. Click on that snapshot to download it locally. So to upload from a snapshot, when you log into a new VNS3 controller, you'll have the option to upload. Choose that file. And here's our new snapshot. Click Submit and Reboot. It will bring in the information about your client packs and then reboot your controller. Next item of Upgrading License. Under Maintenance, click Licensing. You can upgrade your VNS3 controller live without a need for an operational window. 
An upgrade needs to be deployed to all of your controllers in a VNS3 peered topology. So in order to upgrade, you need to send your VNS3 keyset ID to cohesive networks. Click import a new license. You'll get an encrypted message from cohesive networks. Click submit. And you'll see the contents of the license displayed and confirm that your new license contents parameters are what you expect.